This is the Apex, lead vessel of the intergalactic space patrol known as Blue Sentai, traversing across the galaxy, helping to squash threats both terrestrial and interdimensional. And I am its newest recruit, Hayata Subaraya. How I got to this point is a story about coming back from the dead. And it's a long one, but hey, I got the time to relay all the details. See, I was nothing more than just another unremarkable human being who had been living on Earth Colony 4. As humans continued to venture out into space, they offered opportunities such as Outer Spaceways Incorporated for individuals like myself to advance and maybe somehow get a job do performing tasks that could further advance our species in the cosmos. However, I had been advised by a social vigilante that this organization was up to nefarious dealings, and that a man like myself would only be fodder, under the illusion that I was excelling. So going on this mission, I hoped to meet with said vigilante, but biding my time, I always found myself getting harassed by the ship's AI computer. Hayata Tsuburaya, please report to the upper deck for further instructions. Good to see you, Hayata. Now, if you could use the computer console to help augment my presence into a holographic form so I may further assist you with this voyage. You mean to take on, like, a physical form that I can interact with? Yes. Or if you want, I could take on the form of a shape-shifting monster. Just kidding, of course. You do like jokes, don't you? Ah, oh, now that feels better. Now I can communicate with you just like another human being. However, to can further enhance this experience, other than calibrating my speech and dialogue, there is an implant I would like to have you, oh, put up your nose so I may further gauge your thoughts and understand how we can go about this voyage. Is that really necessary? Yes! Oh, you're afraid that I'm going to tap into your deepest, darkest thoughts. I promise I will only be concerning myself with anything regarding this voyage, so you rest assured on that. So there, if you look below in the console, little red dot right there, press it and pull it out, up your nose. Perfect! Now what's this you're thinking about landing this ship on an asteroid? I was already feeling unnerved, but that was in fact my plan. Instead of using all of the ship's fuel, he actually figured out a way where we could find the perfect asteroid to land the ship that was heading in the trajectory of the planets that we were supposed to be scoping out for mining. And I have to admit, I had to keep my cool, act like I was doing business as usual, and for that reason, I remained calm, he remained calm, we were all helping each other in a way that was productive. Still, no matter how many times I tried to fight it off, I always had this feeling that he was just staring me down with this... Well, he hardly had the expression on his face, but his eyes had a gleeful sadism to them. Like he was studying me like an insect on a petri dish. No matter, we still went on with the mission as planned, but he never left my side. Even when performing mundane tasks I said I could accomplish on my own, he was always following right behind Even when I tried to have much needed privacy, he still showed up. It was starting to get unbearable, but as the asteroid continued its trajectory, he agreed that this was the perfect time to put me into stasis. He administered everything, set up the apparatus. I kept having this disturbing feeling like he was treating me like a test subject. He no longer spoke, but just did these mannerisms and hand gestures that left me unnerved, feeling like as if he pulled that switch to put me in the stasis, he was going to do things to me. Well, I, I dare not even bother thinking about it. And these machines have no feelings. 
that's what left me concerned. However, he had a switch that actually had the capability of knocking me out right then and there. And just out like a light, I was in stasis. Only then was he going to get a front row seat into my memory bank. The images and echoes of an office worker who by mere circumstance and chance met the social vigilante named Captain Vinton who warned me about things that were being done to society at large for me to escape and get out as quickly as I could. You see, I was actually caught in a hellish workplace in a soul-crushing environment that was killing my very essence and having dealt with things that left me scarred emotionally and physically. He was going to have my number. My own personal code to my emotional storage bank and how to use that against me. similar to the one on Earth's home solar system known as Mars, however it did have a thicker atmosphere. But everywhere I looked, even though all was set up, the mining equipment had been assembled, I did not see or hear the AI. I tried a few times to summon it to augment its presence just to inquire where we were at, but got no response. Computer, I would like to request your presence to inquire about this planet. But I still got no response. All I could do was venture outside and study the surroundings. It was even more boggling that the mining drill was actually operating. So the entire time I was in stasis, as short as it seemed, everything had been taken care of. The mining drill was operating and collecting samples, so my only instinct was to somehow get a hold of Captain Vinton. But first I wanted to investigate to find a place that would be more discreet away from the base. It was only then that I started to hope I really was having a nightmare after all.
This was truly a savage place. Hayata, it's good to hear from you. I lost contact with you when your ship left the Cygnus Belt. Where the heck are you calling from right now? I have no time to explain other than I am stuck on this dangerous planet that an AI bot set our ship to land on it, and there's no sign of this AI bot anywhere. Ugh, that damn head whaling using them AI bots to spy on his own employees. Will you just hang in tight there? I have some friends, they're actually aliens. They'll get into contact with you as soon as we can traject where you're located. Now, you hang tight there. Understood. Having a nice chat there with Captain Vinton? You don't know how many times I've been trying to get into contact with you. Ever since I've landed on this planet, I've been living in a waking nightmare. You at least owe me an explanation as to what we're doing here and what we're supposed to be dealing with on this planet. I'm the only one that needs to know the details of this voyage and this planet. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I'd be better off if I actually deprogrammed your presence. There's no way you can unprogram me. Your thoughts are my thoughts now. Only then did I remember an old trick I learned back in a bar. No, no. And that took care of him. However, it left me in a bit of a situation where now I had to operate many of the ship's controls manually, but it at least allowed me the luxury of being able to speak with Captain Vinton more explicitly about my location. I wasn't that far off away from where he often ventured throughout the nearby galaxies. But there was still so much I had to do all on my own until he could finally arrive with his colleagues. I first tried to go into stasis just to at least lay low, but I had the paranoia of the various creatures and entities that were here located here, and I thought it would be better at least to move out into orbit to meet with Vinton. But I could not get the ship's manual override to work. No matter what I did, no matter what tools I tried to utilize, the AI had set up everything so that it was needed to get the ship operational. But I still tried, at least in the main ship's control room. All the buttons and facilities were there to make it possible. But every time I could hear the rocket engines ready to thrust, it sounded as though the ship was out of fuel. As if this fiend had actually designed this whole mission so that I would be stranded here and fodder for whatever was lying in this planet to consume me while it gathered the data for the mining. It's enough to drive me insane just to ponder it. But in a brief moment of foolishness or courage, I realized venturing out and trying to at least find Captain Vinton flying nearby would be the safest thing to do. Despite all the dangers, my only consolation was I was more prepared to confront anything that I came across. And that was my problem. Because it didn't allow me to realize what sort of ammunition I had loaded into this weapon. If monsters could laugh, this was one hilarious moment it could relish in. Goodbye, cruel world.
I hate to disrupt the building tension in this scene. However, there's a plot point I felt that I needed to address that at least will explain further events in this story. You see, the company had sent an individual named Sanchez on my tail to spy on me, as if the threat of the AI wasn't bad enough. Well, <laughs> looks as though his spaceship landed safely. However, I don't seem to see any indications that the AI is monitoring any mineral activity. Huh, I should go down there and check for myself to see how old Hayata's doing. After all, it's barely been a few weeks since I last seen him. <laughs> So yeah, there you have it. Just thought I should get that out of the way so when he shows up you're not thinking where the heck did this character come from. Now, back to the rest of the story. You wanna go over there and check on him? I always think it's gross when they're twitching and fidgeting like that. Their bodies always twitch while they're letting out the last ounces of blood. I still feel horrible after I told Captain Vinton we would rescue him. You can feel bad for him all you want. I don't feel sorry for any species that ventures out into the cosmos without any prior knowledge of how to defend themselves in any environment or planet. I know, I know. Still, it was only a space rookie escaping a destitute existence. Still, I'm not sure about your idea about getting him into Blue Sentai. I owe it to Captain Vinton to do something about this. I understand your efficacy, but if we revive him, we're going to be held responsible for his actions and any powers he may attain. So without further ado, don't worry, I'll add some deified panache to the revival. Hayata, do you hear me? I am Egron of Blue Sentai. If you see a blue orb, grab it. Welcome back. Now in your revival, not only have you regained your consciousness, but you also have a newfound power to making you, well, superhuman or something like that. I will in due time help explain all of your new powers and abilities interrupt, but I'm just curious as to what sort of abilities I have. After all, you brought me back from the dead. I mean, am I invincible? Try this for size. Pun intended. By yelling, Henshin, you can grow to the height of these rocks. Henshin! With your developing mental capabilities, you can transform in and out of these stages, and even maintain your strength and armor at normal height. Metallic in appearance and structure, it'll adjust to any atmospheric and astronomical shifts. You are also equipped with feet and soles that bend with your actual movements. Beyond state of the art, Wait, what's that rumbling? Hayata, fall back! This is no time for trading! No, it isn't. It's time to get even. Well, isn't this exciting? My own colleague actually has turned into some kind of mecha hero. If only there was a way he could have told me this was his plan after all, I could have maybe assisted him in this endeavor. However, I'll have to think of a new approach of how to handle this situation on behalf of the corporation. Well, I'm beyond impressed. For restoring your health, 
I now offer you the opportunity to join Blue Sentai as an agent, Crusader for Justice in the Galaxy. We'll get you back to the Starfleet ship Apex, and from there you will be instructed in your new career path. I promise it will be nothing short of exciting. As for me, I better let Captain Vinton know of these updates. Well, I guess you're stuck with me, so you can read my thoughts. Okay, good. You understand telepathy. All right. Do you know how to fly? Ah, what a fight. What carnage. What violence. I can really get behind a hero like this. Well, no sense of wasting my time with my bosses. I can just go straight to the source and find out what exactly Hayata Tsuburaya is up to or my name isn't Sanchez. Now, where did he run off to, that little scammer? Uh, he's not doing that bad first time flyer. Hello, I am Hayata's dear and best friend Sanchez and see there was something important I had to ask him before he got involved with all this craziness So if you could take me to wherever he's heading sure I'm actually just about to teleport there myself. So if you just want to hold on to my hand uh. And so that's how it all started. I told you it was a long story, but I'm glad you stuck around. And there are more adventures on the way, because trust me, it's only going to get interesting here on Blue Sentai. Because now I'm going to meet my new co-pilot, Zance. And in one of our first adventures together, we are actually going to go straight into the event horizon of one of the largest black holes in the galaxy. It will be nothing short of weird and bizarre. But that is the whole point of Blue Sentai. We deal with those things and we try to remedy them as they appear in the galaxy. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on the other side of the black hole. So...